Orcs have some new rules in the latest Octarius mission book, Critical Mass. They're already doing really well in tournaments with their new codex at over a 56% win rate, putting them at about 5th place. Will these new set of rules propel them even further? As always, the amount of content you get in these books is pretty small, and the Orc stuff is no different, with only 9 pages for your £30 price tag. I'll start with the codex supplement for the Blood Axes, and then look at the Army of Renown for the Speed Freaks, so make sure you watch to the end to see what power that brings. The Blood Axe is not one of the most played clans, but maybe this will make a change. As a reminder of what the clan culture actually is, it's a plus one to armor save against ranged attacks over 18 inches, and you can shoot or charge when you've fallen back. They do have some other abilities from the main codex with some redeployment shenanigans, using strats and the warlord trait, and also a relic allows a vehicle to be a command point farm. There are three new warlord traits in this book. The first two are the strongest, but it's hard not to just use the clan culture trait or the other ones of the main codex like brutal but cunning. Extra cunning, once per battle round, when you use a strategic play stratagem, it costs one CP less. There are seven arc strats this could affect, and essentially you could be getting five free CP per game. Grot shields will become one CP, maybe making it worth it, and monster hunters is also pretty good for the beast snaggers. Counter tactics, a six inch aura, allowing core units to heroically intervene. And the last one that isn't quite as good is duck and cover. You can make boys or commandos that are wholly within a terrain piece untargetable unless they're within 12 inches. How many times are you going to be hiding your infantry in cover for most of the game? I'm not too sure. There are three good relics. Straight shooter, 24 inch range custom shooter. It's a DACA 1410, strength 5, AP minus 1 and damage 1. But the key thing is that you can target characters. And wounds of 6 give an additional mortal wound. Fight Detector. This allows Blood Axe core units to charge any reserves landing within 12 inches, and they also get a plus 2 to charge. It's only for reserves that land near a character with a relic, so it's not too amazing. Noise Box. A 6 inch aura of minus 1 to leadership and combat attrition. If the bearer has killed the character, it can then go up to minus 3. The best one is certainly Straight Shooter, as it's going to be a real character killer. There are 8 new strats, and some are pretty fun. Here are some of the best. You got Surprise for 1 CP. Commandos that are wholly in area terrain. Enemies don't count as charging. Can't fight first and get a minus one to hit. Young Bloods and Glory Boys are some good Buster Storm Boys, if you actually use those. And Tactical Awareness for 2 CP lets you do actions while advancing, shooting or using aura abilities. This does seem pretty pricey, but it could be a real help to secondaries so you can advance and do an action. This is an interesting set of fluffy rules, nothing too strong. I wouldn't buy the book just for this. Now let's look at the real power, the Speed Freak Mob. Free Booters and the Speed War have certainly been tearing things up, and this is the new Army of Renown, that will be a joy to some people. There are restrictions as always with these builds. The whole army has to be speed freaks, wagons or aircrafts. There's no infantry, which will make the objective game a little harder. The speed freaks lose their clan culture, but do gain adrenaline junkies. The benefits are actually really strong, improving combat, speed and toughness. Speed freak bikers gain obsec. Outrider detachments can be CP free when you include your warlord. And you'll probably find you use these type of detachments quite a lot in this build. The adrenaline junkies is really strong. Only for Speed Freaks, it gives a plus one attack on the charge or heroic intervention. Allows you to shoot normally even when advancing. You get a 6 plus invun as standard, and that increases to a 5 plus invun when they're advancing. They also get a really strong new Warlord trait, which could be considered an also include. It's called Speed King, and is a 6 inch aura to re roll once to wound. For the custom jobs, after the excitement of what we've seen so far, these aren't that good. You've got Drag Chains for 15 points. Deal D3 mortal wounds when falling back. So it's actually really situational. And raise suspension for 10 points. A speed mob vehicle can shoot enemies out of combat. Which I can't really see how much I'd use. There are 6 new stratagems and probably the best 2 are... Charge! For 2 CP. Plus 1 attack and plus 1 AP for war bikers on the charge. And crashing through for 1 CP. Mortal womb impacts when you charge. The war bikers on 4 plus deal mortal wombs. Mega truck scrap jet and custom booster blaster on a 2 plus deal D3. If you roll a 6 it's 2 D3 mortal wombs. And other vehicles on a 4 plus give a D3 mortal wound as well. While a lot of vehicles are pretty good at dealing mortal wombs than crash in, this is probably going to be a bit more reliable. There's an interesting and powerful way to play Orc Speed Machines. I'm interested to see whether people start playing this more instead of pure freebooters lists. I hope you like this roundup, and if you did, don't remember to drop us a like, and see you again soon. Bye.